Do you feel out of place in the extroverted world of entrepreneurship? As an introverted business owner, are you searching for ways to connect with like-minded individuals? Ever wonder how you can find your tribe in entrepreneurial circles? Hi, this is Mommy and your Mommy Negosyo. And if you're looking for answers to any of these questions, you have come to the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to share tips on how introverted business owners like you can find and connect with their tribe. Now, here are the five tips that we will help you with. Number one, identify networking environments that suit you. Number two, focus on quality over quantity. Number three, leverage your listening skills. And number four, share your story and your expertise. And number five, seek out or create a niche group. Now, let's explore each of these tips that will help you build meaningful relationships that resonate with your business and your personal style. Are you ready? Let's go ahead with tip number one. Identify networking environments that suit you. So first, start by looking for places where you feel comfortable to meet new people. You see, comfortable settings can help you open up and connect more genuinely. So look for smaller, more intimate networking events or online forums where the atmosphere is less overwhelming. For this one, let's talk about my coaching client, Nicole. Nicole and her husband are both big-hearted animal lovers and they sell pet supplies from their home. While her husband was okay with their current setup, Nicole dreamed of growing the business by having a physical store so they could cater to more pet owners. She knew that she needed to connect with more people to make it possible. However, as she was shy, she did not like joining events where there were lots of people and noise. It made it hard for her to talk and to make acquaintances. Now, through our coaching sessions, Nicole gained confidence and discovered a better way to connect. She found out that joining online forums and networking events is more of her style. These online talks allowed her to have deeper conversations and make genuine connections with fellow pet enthusiasts. With newfound confidence, Nicole's business began to attract more pet owners. Now, did you learn something from Nicole? Yes? Great. Now, let's go to tip number two. Focus on quality over quantity. So instead of trying to meet everyone in a networking event, which can be draining, what we need to do is to prioritize building stronger relationships. As an introvert like me, you will find deeper and more meaningful connections to be more fulfilling for you. So here's what you can do. Engage with fewer people. You have to invest more time and effort into those few relationships. I have a mentee, Mira, who runs a digital marketing business. She has the talent and the skill to help businesses online. But the problem is that whenever she gets invited to big events, she would say no. The thought of talking to a big crowd, unfamiliar faces, was very overwhelming for her. And it took her some time to shift her mindset. Then she decided to shift her focus to meaningful relationships. Instead of just meeting lots of people, she focused on just a handful of them. And with this, Mira realized that she felt happiest when talking deeply with a few friends. And since then, instead of trying to talk to everyone, she would choose to spend more time with just a few people. So remember, focus on quality over quantity. Okay, now let's go to tip number three, which is to leverage your listening skills. As introverts, it is our nature to be excellent listeners. So why not tap into your natural ability to listen? This skill is your key to forming strong connections. Wonderful, right? So next time you chat with someone, don't worry about what to say. Just really listen to what they say. Okay? Giving your full attention shows your genuine interest in their thoughts and their stories. It won't even cost you a single centavo. Now, let me tell you about Shirley. She's a lovely mother in her late 30s and she owns an event supply store. Her business was passed down to her by her elderly aunt who did not have a family of her own. And Shirley, she naturally loved to help everyone around the store, even when she was a little young girl. And her aunt, however, was very passionate about meeting people. She was a very outgoing person while Shirley is an introvert. Now, one particular challenge she faces is attending network events to source new products for her inventory. And these events offer valuable opportunities to discover new supplies and negotiate with new vendors. However, these constant interactions are very, very draining for her. And then she had an idea. One day, she was talking to Misha, an idea about something she could do based on what she is good at. Before each event, she thought she would first check out the vendors and what they were selling. This way, she would know who she wants to talk to. Even though it's hard at first, Shirley's plan worked out really, really well. 
And now she gets good deals from vendors and finds new items for her store more easily. Now, how great is that? If she can do it, you can do it too, right? Okay, let's go to tip number four, to share your story and your expertise. Do you hold back from sharing your experience and knowledge? Well, I used to be like that as well until I found out how I could help others in their businesses. That's why when I wrote my book, Grow Your Business Pinoy, when I became a business mentor for Go Negocio, and now I am a neurotransformational results coach, then I started to develop all of these skills. So don't be afraid to share what you've been through and what you know. When you're ready, open up about your challenges, about your experiences, your skills in conversation, or even on social media. You can open up and tell your story because your story can be a blessing to others. You can do what Wina did for her business. Wina is the go-to person for interior designs for condo unit owners in her city. In fact, she even started her consultancy business there. But before that, she hesitated to share her journey and knowledge in interior design. It was only when she decided to seek guidance that she overcame her reluctance. So to cut her long story short, before each client meeting, Wina would meticulously research the latest trends and innovative designs. Doing so enabled her to provide tailored solutions to her clients. And so during consultations, she prioritized active listening and thoughtful communication. Now she now leverages her ability to connect deeply with her clients and understand their needs. Yes, she felt uneasy at first, right? But soon she got the hang of it. This now helps her secure projects and earn the trust of her clients. And this led to more positive referrals and thus expanded her consultancy. So the last one is tip number five, seek out or create a niche group. Want to know how successful introverted business owners do that? Well, they look around or create a niche group that resonates with their passions and interests. This group does not have to be really, really big. But what is important is that these niche groups offer a unique sense of community. You can start by engaging with existing groups that already align with your interests. Another way you can do this is to initiate a group that is centered around a particular passion or around a particular industry. Now, let me share with you Elaine's story. Elaine started her baby skin products in her mid-30s. She was really enthusiastic about her business. However, she couldn't find the right fit. This made her realize that there was no online community where people interested in organic skincare products could come together. So she decided to make her own online space. She used social media to tell people about it. Elaine made sure to stay active online and soon others who cared about organic skincare joined in. They would exchange ideas on finding natural ingredients and they would also discuss regulations specific to baby skincare products. And the best thing, the members of her tribe would cheer each other on when things get tough. So you see, finding your tribe as an introverted business owner is about accepting your unique qualities and finding places where they fit well. And just like others, you can create a supportive network that matches your introverted nature and business goals. Remember, the right tribe is out there. It might just take a bit of searching and courage to find or create it. If you're ready to learn more and to take your business to the next level, remember to subscribe to my newsletter for more insights and tips. Together, let's unlock your business's financial potential and create a thriving future. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, stay inspired, stay empowered, and keep reaching for your dreams. This is Mommy and your Mommy Negosyo saying, Be Business-Minded, Pinoy! Yeah.